called yet? It's a 1928 real tricone. should have practiced it first, right? <laughs> you got to get your hands tuned into this guitar, you know, and I just haven't. Well, maybe maybe now that, that people are not going to be slamming their electric guitars so hard, maybe they'll, maybe the company that builds those new ones like that will sell more of them. Well, I haven't played this guitar in about a year, right? So It's like a mirror. Forgive me for my um, not really tuning into the guitar first. Let's see if it fits in the stand. Oh, yeah, it does. Okay. And we will not put the bronze slide here so it falls onto the oh, guitar. That would be great to make a nice dent in it. Okay, so this video is about... That was a joke, really. Tube preservation. We're not saying play one of those, obviously. <laughs> I mean, you can if you, you want. You don't have to turn an amp on. It's already amplified. But that's not really what... The, the, we, we've gone over the first two. We have extra points to make. But before we make any points at all... What are we going to settle once and for all, Michelle? The standby switch. No. The turning on your amp. Right. What is the best way to turn on your tube amplifier? Okay. Michelle was reading me all this stuff from forums this morning, and it's like, it's all over the place, right? I'm, I'm going to straighten this out well, for you guys. it's good that people are focusing on it. Yeah, but I'm going to straighten this out for you guys right now, okay? This is, this is Word, okay? This is right off of us. This is a schematic. This is, see where it says here, AB763? I just drew this by hand, so forgive my sloppy drawing. I just did this two seconds before the video to show you something. If you don't have an AB763 Deluxe Reverb, which is, I use that one because it's the most, obviously the most common amp in the world right now, okay? Um, if you don't have one, it's your other amp is pretty much the same, okay? This is a tube rectifier. If you don't have one of those, make pretend this is solid state, okay, in this conversation. This mess right here is the input transformer. That's your voltage transformer, okay? What a voltage transformer does is it takes a voltage from the wall, which in the modern day should be around 120, but it's never gonna be exactly that. So if you wanna do something before this to make sure it's that, you're doing yourself a favor, okay? Now, what I told you in the last video was how to know exactly what all these are designed to be from this, so you know what to put in here is you measure this tap, the 6.3 tap, because a tube's filament has always been 6.3 volts. There are a few people that ran them higher on purpose, but those tubes wear out fast. Don't do that. And don't run them low, okay? That doesn't help anybody. Running them low burns out, burns up the tube as bad as running them too high. That, that, that filament is supposed to light at 6.3 volts AC, okay? If you have DC filaments, you're going to find to have to have a different way to measure. But look, if you've got DC filaments, then you've got a 120 volt input. I'll guarantee you that, okay? Because those didn't come out until the voltage in the world was 120 volts back on the schematic. Okay, so here's how it works. Here's your standby switch. Make pretend for right now it's on, okay? So that power is going to come on to the amp. You're not going to you're not going to leave it off. Let's just put for sakes of showing you how this works. You take this switch, you bang this switch, and you turn it on, okay? Now, all of these filaments have to light, okay? This filament, this is the five volt filament winding to light the rectifier tube. Now, if you don't have a rectifier tube, you don't have that, okay? All this has to light when you turn this on. The high power gets lit, comes in, goes to plates, to your screen grids, to circuit, to your, to your preamp tube circuits. It's all pulling on this all at once, okay? So it's not slamming any one thing because it's, it's basically a slow start. No, back on the schematic. Now, 
this rectifier tube won't supply any high voltage at all until the 5 volt filament warms it up. There's no need for this switch. Now I'm going to show you why. If you don't believe that opening this switch up while all this is running destroys your tubes, which it does in theory, it strips the cathodes of your tubes, let's just prove that there's no advantage to this at all. Let's just forget about that part and show you that there's absolutely no advantage to this switch. Okay, because if that switch was closed and you had power to everything and you flip this on, no high voltage is going to run until this tube warms up. Okay, that's a slow start. That's one of the reasons a tube rectifier was used. Okay, all these filaments have to light, they pull back on the transformer, the current drops. Okay, um, it's, it's not the greatest slow start in the world, but it's a slow start. Now, if this is solid state, then all the same stuff is still pulling except high voltage runs immediately, okay? But it doesn't come slamming in. Now, let's turn the amp on with the standby open, okay? What happens? These light up, they warm up. You're supposed to wait, okay? This lights up, it warms up. Now what? Now you've got high voltage sitting there waiting. All done, waiting. What in the world happens when you close that switch instantly? bang that high voltage goes slamming that circuit that's not good there's no advantage to the switch okay no advantage at all this is how this not works even to warm everything up. all right so the last word what is the best possible way to tune a tube turn a tube amplifier on and i'm not telling you to do it this way i'm going to show you how that best way to and i don't care what kind of amp it is if it's got tubes in it this is the best way to do it. Now, if I only owned one amp, okay, and I wasn't selling amps and, and had to, you know, keep monitoring them and everything. Say I only owned one amp and I had $1,000 worth of vintage tubes in that amp. Well, now that'd be $4,000 worth of vintage <laughs> tubes, right? I'm going to show you how I would turn that amp on and on if I just came in to play, okay? And I'm, you know, I'm not telling you to do this and I'm not telling you this is convenient to the gig or anything, okay? Because you obviously have the other stuff figured out, like we discussed, line voltage, right? So this is a variac back here. It's buried, okay? Now I'm going to turn the variac all the way down, okay? I've, I'm going to turn this switch on in a second up to um, on the 140 setting. So this all the way up would put up 140 volts. So first of all, you have to have some common sense and know how to use one of these. Because 140 volts will damage your amp. Now, follow me, Michelle. Okay, these two amps, I'm going to turn these two amps on in the best possible way to turn a tube amp on. First thing I'm going to do is make sure I don't have an open cord here humming because the amp will automatically, at, you know, draw current and we don't want that, right? So I'm going to turn the amps... So you don't have it plugged in. I'm gonna, yeah, they're plugged in. I'm going to turn the amps on, but there's no input plugged into them. And there's no voltage now because the very X off. Now follow me over here, Michelle. Now... I know this isn't the best setup in the world, but I have a little meter plugged into my power box down there that this Variac feeds, okay? The blue light's going to come on when, when I bring this up. Now, I'm going to bring this Variac up slowly. And you see my meter's reading 54 volts, 57 volts, 60-something, blah, 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 70-something. On the blue light, Michelle, keep it on I'm the blue light. To. Okay. Now I'm in the 90s. Now I'm 102. See? I'm just going slow. Oh, I went up a little high. I'm 122. I back her down. 119. Now when those amps come on, that voltage is going to go down a little bit. Because you're going to see how long it takes for them to pull current back on the wall. See it's starting to go down? I hear a buzz. Yeah, because the amps are firing up. So it went down 2 volts. I so, can't bend over like that. Okay, well, so now I just bring the variac up to the last two volts, to around 120. Okay, here it is. 121, 120, right there, okay? Now, if I were to measure the wall before that Variac right now, I can tell from where my Variac set that I probably got about 120 volts coming out of the wall right now. That's too much for an amp, all right? Um, now, sometimes it goes below 120, so I use the 140 setting on my Variac. Because if you put it on the 120 setting, you're all, all the way up. It's only going to give you 120 if you have 120. If your voltage drops down in the middle of the day because all the businesses around you are using a lot of volts, uh, a lot, a lot of power. Turn on the air conditioners. 
air conditioners, stores are running, businesses are running, computers are running, all that stuff, right? Then, then you know, that's why you use that's why the 140 volt setting is there, so you can get 120, unless you need more than 140 for something, but not a guitar. So you can get the 120 if your voltage is lower than 120 in the wall. Final word on the safest way. Everything came up slow. You are the slow start. Your hand is the slow start circuit on the Variac. That is the way for your tubes to last and last and last, okay? I don't do it. I don't sit there and do that every time because well, my, my apps are really in good shape, good solid. I know how slow my, my circuit starts. I don't have a special circuit in there to fire this and then fire that. A lot of high-end audio gear does. And that's because some people don't want to do this, you know, with, with the Variac, you know. So on high-end audio amps, they put slow start circuits. It, they, it first slowly fires the 6.3s, then fires this, then fires that. But as you can see, that standby switch, is a, it's a Band-Aid with bacteria on it, is what it is. It's not, <laughs> it's not even a Band-Aid, okay? It, it's, it, now, I'm sorry. No, you're, it, it's, it was in shadow. Oh, how about that? That's perfect. Okay. So now it's in shadow again. Tell me there when. Okay, now listen. Dick Denny knew better. He invented the AC30. Is there a, is there a standby switch on an AC30? No, because he, he was an electronic engineer and he knew that that wasn't going to help anybody with anything. Okay? Is, does a Macintosh have it? No. Does a, a, a Grant Lundlin have it? No. Do any of the real high-end audio power amps have a standby switch? No. Did they ever? No. Why? Because they were designed by electronic designers. Well, My amps don't have them. And everything. I have put them on amps before in the past so that people can switch cabinets, put it on standby just long enough to switch a cabinet. And I don't even like that. And I, so I stopped that uh, years ago. I, I put them, sometimes I'd put them on Did for people if they, re, if they requested, I don't even remember. Sometimes I'd put it on if people requested it, sometimes not, you know. Um, but that, that's the deal, that's the last word on, on how to be the safest possible way, if you want it to be, to turn on any amp, and of course, I went to 120 because my amps run on 120. If your amps needs to be run on 110 because of what we discussed before, because you hit 6.3 at 110, right? Well, then you only bring it up to 110, all right? That 120 was just for uh, sakes here with, That's what, your amp with what I was doing with my amp, okay? Now, here's the last possible thing I can tell you to save tubes, okay? And oh, I'm gonna get comments. I'm gonna get a lot of comments about how arrogant I am because, but listen, I'm just telling you the way it is. I'm not telling you not to use Do them what or whatever. Want. Do what you want, okay? Combo amps. Oh, and by the way, real quick before that, when you're done playing, there's no, there's no difference in how you break power. Just break power, okay? You break power with the power switch. That doesn't hurt anything. Okay, when you stop power, you don't have to go over there. A lot of people do and turn it back down slowly. You don't have to do that. A lot of old timers Just do that. Just when you turn it on. Just turning on. Okay. Turning off, brake power, that's all you need to know. All right, so in these times, tubes are real hard to get, right? So I'm gonna say combo amps destroy tubes. They do, I'm sorry. That's why you that's don't that. make them any one of the reasons you don't I don't make, make them, them unless somebody really bugs me to make them one, and I do. You still don't do But, it. you know, I, I've just seen tubes destroyed in them, the ones I make. You know, sometimes I can't even get a, I get a set of tubes in there sounding good, and I test it for a week, and I've ruined their tubes. Does it beat up the other components of the amp? Or just of course it does. Because, but, see, when they invented a tube, they never thought the dumbassery would go far enough that somebody would stick that tube in a, in a, in a speaker cabinet. And the only people that <laughs> only people that ever did it were guitar amp guys, you know, guitar amplifiers, and it was done. Well, it was for convenience. Many years, it was for convenience and stuff. But the tube wasn't designed for that. You you take and then they throw it in the trunk of their car. For that, the what, well, first thing that ruins your tube is rattling it, you know. So don't throw your tubes in the trunk of your car anymore. Uh, go to the gig like you used to. Make sure you put it. Make sure it's padded, so it's not getting the crap knocked out of it on put the it way in the to the gig. Put the back seat and put the seatbelt okay? on it. Now, when you, when 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 you so the combo thing. 
whatever. They just destroy tubes. What, how do you stop that? Well, maybe play a little lower, whatever. You decide how you're going to stop that. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that to a head in a cabinet now and tell you what you can do. Because the same shit happens with a head in a cabinet. If you put this head directly on this cabinet, it's getting rattled if you're playing really loud, right? Well, and yours is going to knock the whole amp off onto the floor. Yeah, mine will actually rattle the amp right off on the floor without these pads. I sell my amps with these pads. People always ask Show me, the pads. you got any more of those? And I tell them, they're nothing. They're just, I get these at they're Home Depot. They're furniture things. They're furniture movers. They have rubber on this Show side. The Show the thing you got from Home Depot. The Felt on this side. Built. Okay. They, they keep the head from rattling. Now... If I was going to play live and I was going to play loud, I would have to take it a step further than this, even before tubes were, were, were scarce. Okay, what I would do... Rubber. No, I wouldn't have the cabinet on the head. Oh, you I mean, didn't. I wouldn't have the head on the cabinet. No way. Okay. No way. So, oh, well, I got a tiny little stage. I only have so much room. Well, I mean, did you have a, your cabinet in a road case? Did you have your head in a road case? You probably did. So, you can, you can steal this much more room. Not, you can't steal this much more room, this much more room on the stage. So what you do is you put your, your, your head box, your head um, um, uh, road, case. road case down on the floor and you put your cabinet on it. Then you put your cabinet road case behind that and you put the head with these pads, because the drums and everything are still hitting the floor, with these pads on top of the road case for the cabinet. And so the head's right behind the cabinet. And, and now you don't have to worry about that. And now the vibration's not hitting it. Hard. Right? You do it or you don't do it. Whatever. But but these are just tips I can give you now because we don't know how long this is going to last. And I don't know how many amps you have. Your guy that has one amp, one amp, and you didn't get some extra Even tubes. Even if there wasn't a tube right? shortage, you don't want to waste them anyway. No, I have always preached this stuff. But but this is for the guy now that that's, oh shit, I don't have any extra tubes and I have... And yeah. I have one. And everybody was scrambling to buy backup tubes. And right. They one blues junior, you know. I mean, I don't know. Do you want to take that out and put it in a small head box and use the blues junior cabinet as a cabinet? Knock yourself out if you do. Whatever. I don't know. But I am telling you that I've never seen tubes last long in a combo. They get rattled. They become microphonic, which leads to another question you asked me. The tube thingy. The tube thingies. The little orange tube dampers. They help. Okay, do they hurt the sound? You find out. Play low, get it set up right, right, nice. Listen to it. You have one there. Then put them on. Then listen to it again. If it bothers you that much, don't use them. If you don't, oh, those feel rings. Is that what you're the little about? rings? If oh, okay, it, gotcha. little orange rings. I should have brought some. You got a big box out. of them there. Yeah, well, well, there's some on those tubes. If you want to close in on those, those, those inside the yeah. thing there. Yeah, these tubes, these two tubes right here, are are eight hundred dollars a piece in the market. Now, those are smooth plate telefunkins, the two with the rings on them. And so isn't that one. But I don't have a ring on that one because that's a driver tube. Okay? You don't play this thing much anyway. No, it's my base amp. But look here. Hockey pucks and those things. Oh, back off, Michelle, a little bit. Okay? Hockey pucks and those pads because this is a lot of low frequency, and I don't want to rattle this head. Oh, yeah, and these tubes right here, show these. These are beautiful. These are a thing of beauty. I don't know if the camera's going to pick those up. Maybe pull back just a bit and then hold right there. These are real KT90 Type 2s from the early 90s, okay? They're still going strong. You cannot buy these anywhere anymore. They were a fortune for a while, and now they're totally gone. So there's a big fan on this amp in the back. I don't ever turn this amp on without that fan on to keep those things cool. I see the fan. All right, but this is part three. Um, so recap um, the other points. So the, we have a, a quickie recap. No attenuation or oxes on there. Uh, Variac, the uh, tube filament, 6.3, kept cooling fan, and uh, what was the other one? Okay, did I write it down? Play lower volume, standby switch, don't use it, combo amps, kill the, kill the tubes, and the tube thingy, the tube damper thing. Anything else? Oh, and, and get a resonator guitar. <laughs> and stop using the amp all together. <laughs> Right, but we know, we know that's not one anybody wants to do. But you know. No, oh, and the those little pads. And the little pads, and that's it. So I'll leave you guys alone now because I think I've given you every possible.
Bob plays his 90 I think I've covered just about every possible thing about making your tubes last longer um, and uh, wait, wait it out and see what happens and and fill in the questionnaire on Western right. Electric. Well, remember yeah. this. This is the real story right here. Okay. If you don't know anything about electronics, I think I explained it's simple enough to know that either don't worry about anything and just turn your switch on and off, or if you want to be really anal about it, the only <laughs> right way to do it is with the Variac, which I always use anyway, because I always want to know I have the right volts. And I don't come up slowly. But if again, if I had one amp, if I had a 1967 JTM square logo with one set of old KT6s in it and at one and that's all that I could find and and I had tubes as expensive as isn't that bass amp you know that's the only amp I have left with vintage tubes because I don't play it much I don't keep them in any of my other amps I keep them in boxes. Are there any modern tubes that you could put in there? Yeah I keep them in boxes for testing you know but I've just never got around to taking them out of that amp but um you know if all I had was that, I would turn it on with that Variac because if it pops and you damage a tube, well, you know, you're I could just turn on a different amp and then deal with that later. But if you only had the one amp, you're done. Oh well, you know. And everybody's been sending a lot of real positive uh, messages, feedback, and people are filling out the questionnaires of Western Electric. Uh, Lego sent one text today with his little screenshot. Thanks, Lego. <laughs> and we're gonna. Um, we're going to hope, keep our fingers crossed that this is a short life situation. Yes, and hopefully it will be. Or maybe something really positive will happen from it. We'll have some made in the USA tubes that are going to be high quality and easily available for people. That'll be a good thing. Yeah, maybe. Could be turn everything around better. Maybe, you know. Peace Be cool, out. everybody. <laughs>